Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more Legion Imperialis content. As you guys know, I've been trying to trundle through as much of these videos as possible to deliver all the things I want to to you guys. There's a lot of things still to cover. I'm not sure how I will be able to cover it all as this release has been absolutely colossal, but I am doing my best. Last week's video, we talked about the construction of all of the awesome scenery that is currently available for that. And I showed you how the different buildings go together, which way you can build them and how versatile they are um, with kind of changing the shapes and designs and creating buildings of your own. So if you're interested in that, you can go back and watch that video. In this video, I'm gonna help you guys get those buildings painted in a very easy, a very accessible way um, so you can have a beautiful table to play your Legion Imperialis on. Before I get into the video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You guys are awesome. Without you, I could not continue doing what I am doing. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you're interested in getting involved with that, there are links in the description below. You get access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys. So I think it's two pretty awesome reasons to get involved. And number two, I've set myself the colossal goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2024 and to incentivize all you guys to jump on board. At the end of this year, I will be giving away an Imperial Titan if I reach certain goals. So 65,000 subscribers, a Warhound, 85,000 subscribers, a Reaver, and 100,000, a Warlord. So if that's something you're interested in getting involved with, all you need to do to enter is hit that subscribe button. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, get some epic buildings painted. Okay guys, this is the building that I chose. It's actually a conglomeration of a bunch of the different buildings I built in the last video. I showed you guys how they can stack up. Well, I actually just glued them all stacked up because I prefer these kind of taller, more imposing buildings. Um, I sprayed them with normal Chaos Black from Games Workshop and it is the first time that I've ever noticed really what the community talks about with Games Workshop spray being a bit glossy. This building was so shiny and I was kind of, it kind of threw me off a bit because I've been throwing gray seer over the top of it for so long. It is very shiny under these lights. But that's not really a big deal for the way we're going to paint it. So we started with Inky by Darkness. I'm going to go for a heavy overbrush. So basically like a dry brush, but you're not removing as much paint. You're trying to get it on kind of most of the area, but you are looking for all the deepest kind of recesses and cracks to stay a little bit shadowed. Nothing crazy if they're not. It is the, the next two dry brushes that is going to make all the difference for the kind of depth in color. But Inky by Darkness is a very, um, a very nice base coat for this. I decided to go with the kind of dark blue basing scheme for my buildings. As if you've seen my video on how to paint the Imperialis tile set, I've done like the, the sidewalk and the plazas in a like nice marbly color. And then all the roads are in this kind of dark blue color, which is what I'm going to do with the same color as the buildings. I didn't particularly want to introduce a third big broad color into the table. I always thought a table should be more muted so that the armies stand out more. It's so like I said, these buildings are all going to be the same color as the road. So there will be a definite gap between all the buildings on the road, as like I said, that creamy uh, marbly effect going around all the other parts will frame all the buildings really nicely. I have a photo at the end of this video where I will show you exactly what I mean. If what I'm saying doesn't make too much sense to you. Oh, I'm a bit of a blabber in there. Uh, Stegadon scale green was then brought in for the next color. Um, we basically dry brushed up the, the, all of the blue areas once again. Once again, each time we dry brush, we remove more paint. So we're applying less paint to the miniature and just adding a nice second layer. So you can see how the, the color and the depth is starting to show its, uh, show its head. You're starting to see uh, all the different details pop up. After that, we're going to jump up to Thunderhawk Blue, which is going to be the final dry brush um, for the blue stage anyway. And as you can see, I'm going quite light on this. I'm just catching all those sharp edges, all those little details and stuff that are uh, that does exist. This is some staggeringly detailed scenery for its scale. It's crazy. But having a full table of this scenery would be quite beautiful. Like I said, I know, no, not everybody will be keen on the gluing loads of the buildings together or whatever. They like to keep that modular look to them. But I think if I'd, I'd prefer to have, I don't know, seven or eight large buildings as opposed to 20 small buildings for my epic table. More open spaces to work with and play around is, is general consensus of what I want to do. So here's all the blues. And as you can see, we've gotten a really nice tone from that. But now it's time to add a little bit of detail and break up the blue. So the first thing I want to do is grab the broadsword silver from army painter the speed paint and um, it's just a nice dark silver and because it's a speed paint it's very kind of viscous very liquidy which means i can flow it into all these window panes really easily all these kind of shuttered windows if i was to just use lead belcher paint and i was just painting it in it, it would take two hours to do the whole building so thankfully because of the speed paint it just flows in really quickly and in the space of i don't know 20 seconds two of the windows are done so you know it could take 10 minutes to get all the windows done across this building as opposed to the two hours that i genuinely think it would have taken with a small brush and some standard silver paint 
there's definitely uses for the Army Speed paints, um, especially the metallics. I found a couple of uses for them that I'm very happy with. After that, we're going to get some fist on red. I'm going to add a little bit of spot color. If any of those kind of uh, steeple roofs or any of those nice designed roofs, I'm going to do a little bit of a red accent on the tile. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to leave the struts in between the panels, the dry brushed blue color. But then all the, obviously the flat panels, we're going to do a two coat, two stage coat of red. So we're going to start with fist on red and being quite careful of painting that in. Obviously going to do this deep at the very top as well. That full cone is going to be red as well. It only takes a couple of seconds to do this. But like I said, it's quite a large piece and you do need something to break up whatever color you're deciding to paint yours. So if you decide to do the cream buildings, you don't want them to just be a solid cream color. You definitely want something to break it up. And that's actually quite noticeable as I'm going through the process of painting this. Like what I had in my head at the beginning versus what I ended up with at the end of the process is kind of vastly different. Because I did originally think that the blue with red roofs and a bit of silver trim would be enough for me. And I thought the building would look fine from there. But I did actually start to add in extra layers towards the end. I was like, well, actually, it's a little bit too blue here. So let's add a little bit of this here and a little bit of that. And then at the end, I added in a bit of weathering. I think by the time I got to the very end, I was much happier than I was at the kind of end of the blue stage where I thought I was going to be happy. So stick around and, and have a look at that and let me know whether you think I made a, the right decision or whether I've ruined everything. But yeah, a bit of Retributor Armor Gold was used to paint the Aquila details. You've always got to respect the Aquila symbol. The Holy Emperor will not uh, take too kindly for anyone who uh, doesn't bother painting them in. After this, we're going to move over to Lead Belcher. And what we're going to do here is a light dry brush across all of the scenery. And this is just to catch the edges once again, a little bit of chip damage. A little bit of weathering like these are supposed to be these like kind of mass produced buildings so i don't know whether they're actually prefabricated metal painted or whether they're actually kind of cut stone and the silver doesn't make much sense here but i have a feeling that they're actually just like artificial and like all they're just metallic and then obviously the facades are made to look like they're these glorious old buildings but not so Balzar Gold was then brought in and I decided to paint in all the doors originally i was kind of happy with the doors but then like i said earlier there was just too much of that blue so I decided to knock in all the doors in the in this uh, Balthazar gold color. It's kind of a, like a na nice brassy color. And while I was at it, I picked up a few trim pits of the pipe work going around it and something like that. I just did that as well, those coats. And uh, I think it added, once again, a nice little extra step to uh, the building and helped break up the blue. I think that silver I did for the windows was a little too dark. I like it, but obviously it didn't help the building jump off the page. So once again, more color is required. And after this stage, what I decided to do is grab a little bit of dark rust from Humbrol weathering powder. I love this stuff. It's what I use to weather all my Krieg vehicles down. A lot of people usually give out to me that I apply too much of it. Um, so I'm attempting to knock overboard with this video. I may have gone overboard with this video, but I just like the look of it. So you apply this uh, in the kind of corners and recesses of buildings, ledges around the bottom of the building where it's going to be kind of weathered and worn the most lots of nooks and crannies once again it adds another color in it's not too crazy but obviously these buildings would be dirty we're talking about buildings that are in a war zone there's going to be constantly bombs and explosions going off around them and lots of debris and uh, dust and soot and stuff landing on top of them so they will be dirty and also if you've watched my tile painting video i did a doomble brown paint in all around the kind of cracks and recesses so this once again helps tie this building into that scheme now, if you're wondering how I affix the powder to the building, obviously buildings are going to be touched a lot. So I did give it a quick coat of Minotaurum varnish. So that obviously toned down the weathering and made it stick to the model very well. And that gave us this as our final result for our first Legions Imperialis building. By the time I got to the end, like I was looking at this piece, I was very happy with it. It's a quick example of what it would look like on my table with the roads and then obviously the, the marbly thing. And then a couple of pictures of it by itself, just so you can get an idea of what I was going for and the effects that I think I pulled off. Let me know if you guys would change anything or if you like the building or you, you want to see another one on how to paint the cream building or something like that. I'm, I'm very happy to oblige if I find time to help you guys out in any way that I can. So just comment what you think and uh, let me know. Okay guys, and there we have it. I've completed my first Legion Imperialis building. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It was a very easy and accessible thing to do. And if I had 20 of these buildings, I'm sure I could knock them out in an entire day. So yeah, definitely gets a thumbs up from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. Subscribe if you're enjoying the content and you want to see more. And ask me any questions you want in the comments below. And I'll get back to each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for all your continued support. I'll see you in the next video.